Anybody else out there just really tired of cooking? <laughs> if so, this video is for you. By the time you see this, it will be January. And I know that a lot of people will be heading back to work after the holiday or sending kids back to school or both. It's kind of that time of year whenever we are just trying to get back into some semblance of a routine after probably hectic and hopefully fun holiday shenanigans. And I know this time of year, there's a lot of New Year's resolution talk, New Year, New You, Be Your Best Self, setting up self goals and goals for 2022. And I don't know about any of you out there, but I'm a person who kind of needs to sort of decompress. I just need to sort of get back into a routine, have kind of some normalcy before I can really start to dive into that kind of stuff for the new year. So in case there are any of you out there who are like me and you need that and you just need like an easy, normal routine week, I thought I would share some meals with you that I think are super easy, especially as some of us are trying to get back into the swing of things with work and school and kids activities and meetings and church activities. I really just didn't want to have to think about dinner. So I thought, I would share a couple of new recipes with you, things that I'm throwing together this week for my family, and also maybe go back to a few really easy recipes on my channel and kind of rehash those just to give you some ideas for things that come together maybe really quickly, maybe that utilize the slow cooker, maybe that have a limited number of ingredients so that you won't have to worry about like making really complicated dishes during this time whenever we are all just trying to get back on track. For tonight, I'm getting a super easy ground beef stew going in the crock pot. And this is kind of reminiscent of a recipe that my mother-in-law makes. It was one of my husband's favorite dishes as a child, and I can see why. It's pretty simple, and it's gonna be really great on kind of a chilly winter night. It does take just a teeny bit of prep work because I need to dice up some potatoes and chop up about half an onion. So I'm going to get that done, and then I will show you what's going into my crock pot. Here's the bulk of it right here, minus the seasonings, which I'll show you here in just a second. I have about three large potatoes that I peeled and chopped up there, and I left mine pretty chunky since this is gonna be more of like a stew. I don't know, do you guys like your potatoes like chunky or like smaller in your stews? I have half an onion, which I chopped. I'm taking the easy road, and I'm just gonna use this bag of sliced carrots instead of peeling and chopping carrots. I just got some in my perfect box today, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use these. And then I have a pound of ground beef, which I was super happy to find rolled back at Walmart. It was on clear. So it was only $4 for this pound of 80-20 ground chuck. I'm going to need two cups of beef broth and a can of tomato paste. To season this, I'm going to use probably about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon, maybe two, maybe a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning, and then salt and pepper to taste. How much you put in depends on how salty and how peppery you like your food. So I have my ground beef browning right here in my new Instant Pot Aura slow cooker. I love, love, love this thing, partly because of this sauce function right here. I don't have to do this on the stove anymore. I can do it right here in the slow cooker and then I can switch the setting over to slow cook for the rest of the recipe. It has a bunch of other settings on it too that I haven't even tried out yet like a steam setting and a bake setting. I'm looking forward to playing around with the slow cooker more. I'll leave it linked in the description box below just in case maybe you got some gift cards for Christmas and you're looking for something like this. My ground beef is done browning and I've already switched the setting to the low slow cook setting and I'm going to add my Italian seasoning, about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more, a little bit of salt and pepper, about a tablespoon and a half of my broth base to go along with my water I'm about to pour in, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, actually two tablespoons, isn't that what I said I was going to go with? We like Worcestershire, so I'm going to put two tablespoons in, one six ounce can of tomato paste, two cups of water, I'm just going to stir that around to kind of dissolve the tomato paste in there. I think that's not going to be enough water, so I'm going to add one more cup. Now I've got my potatoes and my carrots. Stir that one more time. Now I'm just gonna pop the lid on and let it cook all day and we'll have a yummy dinner. Okay, this is the finished product on the ground beef stew, and I chose to top mine with a little bit of this spicy Mexican blend Tillamook cheese that came in my Imperfect box today, and you can do whatever you want with it. This is a more tomato-based beef stew. It's not like a gravy-based beef stew like I've had before, so I felt like the cheese would go really well with it. You can leave that out if you want. Really easy, really tasty, and I just have some toast to go along with mine. Easy dinner.
Who doesn't love a good one pan meal? That's what we're gonna do tonight. I'm gonna do a really easy one pan chicken Alfredo style meal, and I'm gonna show you a shortcut that I'm taking. I find these packages of diced chicken breast in the freezer section at my Walmart. They don't always have them, but when they do, I pick them up. There are four packages in here of about a half a pound each of already diced up chicken breast. Yes, I know I am paying a higher cost per pound for the convenience of having them already chopped up, but they do come in handy, and sometimes my time is worth more than my money, like tonight. Also, also, I don't have to mess with slicing up raw chicken. I hate having to do that. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I don't like having to do it. I do occasionally to save some money, but sometimes it's nice to have these. So I'm actually going to use two packages of these, one pound of chicken breast diced up for the recipe that we're doing tonight. Here are the rest of the ingredients I'm going to use. I'm going to use two tablespoons of butter, a cup and a half of chicken broth, which I'm going to make from this better than bouillon. I'm going to use four ounces of cream cheese. I wish I had full fat cream cheese, but I just have this third less fat, but that's okay. So I'll use half this block, one cup of half and half and I'm going to shred up some Parmesan cheese probably about three quarters of a cup to one cup to put in at the end. Oh I almost forgot eight ounces of pasta which is half a pound so half this box of pasta which I will use for this dish and then to season it I'm going to use a little garlic salt and pepper and I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of minced garlic too since I have it already minced up and that's going to be it. Let me show you how I'm doing that. I have my chicken in my pot here with a little bit of olive oil. I am browning it and I am seasoning that with just a little bit of garlic salt and pepper. And I also have a little bit of that minced garlic in here as well. I just wanted to brown this for a little bit. I don't need to cook it fully. It can finish cooking with the rest of the ingredients whenever I bring that up to a boil. Okay, I think my chicken is browned a little bit here. So I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I have two tablespoons of butter, a cup and a half of chicken broth, one cup of half and half, which is about all I have left, which is great because I can use that up. My pasta. I want to use about eight ounces of pasta and my half block of cream cheese. I'm just going to put in like that. Remove this to the sink. And now I'm just going to bring this up to a simmer before I cover it and let it finish cooking. Okay. My pasta is done cooking at least, and I'm just giving it a stir before I add the cheese. I shredded about, probably about three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese that I'm going to stir in here. And I might thin this out just a little bit with maybe a little bit of milk, um, just to make it a little bit saucier and put a little bit more cracked black pepper in here and it will be ready to serve. I just tried this and it is so good and it was so so easy I had my doubts because it didn't look like Alfredo that I've made before but it's really tasty especially for as little work as it took me to throw this together yum I've actually shared the next two recipes in previous videos, but they were so good that I thought that they deserved to be shared again. I love this next one as a quick and easy meal because it's really versatile in how you can use it. You guys know that I really like to use smoked sausage a lot for quick meals because it's fully cooked, so you don't necessarily have to bring it up to a certain temperature. It just has to reheat according to how you want to eat it. So this is sort of like a fajita style meal that I made in the air fryer, but you could definitely make this um, as probably a one pan meal if you want to spread it out onto a foil line cookie sheet. I love that I can just kind of take a look around at the vegetables that I have available, chop those up, put them in my air fryer basket, season them how I want them. I used a little bit of olive oil and then sprinkled some of this Tony seasoning. I find that at Dollar Tree for a dollar, you guys. It's a really great seasoning for this kind of thing and it's great because I only need to use one seasoning. I chopped up my smoked sausages and put those on top and then popped the whole thing into the air fryer. I think I cooked mine for 11 minutes at around 350 or so. I usually stop it halfway through and give the basket a little bit of a shake as well. If you were using some different kinds of vegetables, more starchy vegetables like potatoes or carrots that need to cook longer, you might wanna give those a bit of a head start and then put the sausages on top kind of halfway through. But I love that the sausages get a little crispy around the edges and also since the sausages are seasoned, they kind of help season the vegetables as well. And what I love about this is its versatility. We can eat this on its own, we can eat it over rice, I can make tacos with it for my kids. As you see here, these are my kids' plates and I just put it in a tortilla with some fruit and chips and we have a really quick and easy dinner that, like I said, is very versatile and, and can be served lots of different ways. 
This slow cooker Southwest pasta was probably one of our favorite meals that I created during a pantry cooking challenge. If you have watched my channel, you are no stranger to these. This is where I take a look around my kitchen and I try to use up open packages of things, half used packages of things. I raid my freezer for things that have been in there for a while and need to get used. And my refrigerator also maybe for produce or dairy items that are about to expire so that I can make good use of those things. And I make meals for my family using those things. I will actually type out this recipe and the instructions in the description box for you guys. It is the very first recipe that is in my pantry cooking ebook, which I released last month. And I will also leave a link to that ebook below. If you use the code C Mindy save, it will drop the price to just $5. There are 20 recipes in that pantry cooking ebook. And if you use the code C Mindy save, it'll drop the price to $5 so that you can download it. I made the recipe pages printable. I made them pretty easy to read and gave instructions and also a little backstory as to how I came up with those recipes. So if that is something that you are interested in, be sure to check out the description box below and you can have this recipe in the description box. I will type it out for you. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys and given you some ideas. Be sure that you are subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell because I've got lots of new videos coming your way here in 2022. See you soon.